Welcome back to Primetime News. Special welcome to folks on OneSpotMedia.com. Up first this evening, lawyers for Vibes Cartel and his co-accused are blasting retired High Court Judge Justice Lennox Campbell for not treating the popular entertainer's outright denial of any involvement in the murder of Clive Lizard Williams fairly. Cartel is appealing the life sentence imposed on him in 2014 for the 2011 murder. Sean Campbell, Andre St. John and Kahira Jones were also convicted. TVJ's Vashon Brown has been covering the appeal and now joins us live. Vashon? Thank you, Archie and Doreen. Well, it was the fourth day of oral submissions by lawyers representing the appellants. In fact, fourth and final day. Come tomorrow, we will hear the response from the prosecution, led by Senior Deputy Director of Public Prosecutions, Jeremy Taylor. Now today, the trial judge's summary to the jury was again under scrutiny. Vibes Cartel, in his unsworn statement in the 2014 trial, said, My Lord, my hands are clean of Clive Williams' blood, my Lord. If indeed Clive Williams is, the judge said, If indeed Clive Williams is, Cartel responded, Is this ceased, my Lord? I have never sent anyone to kill Clive Williams, my lord, nor did I do it myself, my lord. I am an innocent man, my lord. Attorney at law Oswe Senior Smith, who is representing Andre St. John, told the court that this outright denial by cartel was not given sufficient weight by the trial judge in his directions to the jury. He argued that the strength of the statement was diluted significantly and was detrimental to cartel's case. Based on much of the issues that were raised in the statement in the immediate defense of Mr. Palmer that to my mind in my respectful view those issues merited more careful and substantive directions from the learned court at trial. The other issue according to the lawyers is about the judge's direction on inferences. The judge in his summary of the case told the jury that I must remind you that it is not everything which has to be proved can be proved by direct evidence. That is, you cannot always find a witness that can come and say, I saw this or I heard this. Some things have to be proved inferentially, that is, by drawing an inference from a fact you find proved. He continued, the law permits you to draw inferences, but the law says you must not draw an inference from a set of proven facts unless that inference is reasonable and inescapable. You draw an inference either to establish guilt on the one hand or innocence on the other. The issue as to inferences was really whether or not the directions given or the instructions given to the jury by the court were accurate or sufficiently salutary so that they could have applied those directions properly to the evidence that was adduced by the prosecution for them to have come to a fair and considered verdict. The prosecution's argument is that Kahira Jones and Andre St. John were part of a common design, meaning they all intended to kill Clive Lizard Williams. Jones is accused of holding Lizard from behind and St. John is accused of holding a block over Lizard's motionless body. The trial judge in summation said the prosecution was relying on circumstantial evidence to prove the case. The judge said the first of these circumstances is that there was a common design to kill the men responsible for the loss of the guns and for failure to return them before 8 o'clock on the 14th of August 2011. Mr. Senior Smith says the trial judge was wrong for saying this because the evidence did not support this. He said having a block by itself does not indicate an intention to kill, neither is holding anyone from behind. He told the court that there is an evidential gap. The evidence was not the same in relation to all the defendants. And uh, I was saying that if the evidence was not the same, then certainly common design was not applicable as a legal concept to all of them. Now, attorney for Kahira Jones, Robert Fletcher, also made submissions to the court today. Mr. Fletcher said that the supporting agencies of the state in this matter were loose, lacking and inept, leaving the prosecution with no choice but to roll out a case with what he called deep contamination to lead the trial judge into repeated management confusion. He also argued that the sentences handed down by the trial judge were manifestly excessive. 
Mr. Fletcher argued that the trial judge failed to gather information in respect to a social inquiry report on the men to come to an appropriate position on the sentencing scale. You will remember that all four were given the mandatory life sentence with cartel order to serve 35 years before he becomes eligible for parole. Campbell, Jones and St. John were each ordered to serve 25 years before they're eligible for parole. Remember that come tomorrow, we will hear the response from the prosecution. Archie Doreen, back to you.